What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Ferguson here once again with another Midweek Quickie on the Mr. Ferguson blog channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, we're going to try to be briefer than we have been in, in the past and, and, and condense it to a shorter amount of time. I don't want to you know, take up too much of your time. Thank you for tuning in today. I believe truly, truly that God has placed something on my heart um, to uh, share with you today. Um, it's always great when we go and we read our Bible and all of a sudden it's like revelation happens right there when we read something like, oh my gosh, I never saw that before. That happened to me last week and I knew immediately it's what I was supposed to speak about today. So again, I feel like this is coming straight from the Lord through me to you guys. So I hope it blesses your heart. Again, hit the like button to get us out to more people if you would. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you for the support and the comments and thank you for taking the time to watch today. Today, I want to go to the book of 2 Kings where I've been studying. And in the past, you know, we've kind of been going along in the Old Testament and the New Testament is always, you know, more exciting, right? Because it's where we're living today to talk about Jesus, to talk about the disciples and what's to come in the future. But the Old Testament has just as much relevance as it did before today in 2023, though uh, it's an unpopular opinion sometimes. So uh, I want to read you a story that I was reading in my own studies once again. And uh, it's in 2 Kings chapter 4, if you want to turn there in your own Bible. Uh, but it's a story that you may be familiar with. If you're a Christian and you've been going to a church for a while, then you've probably heard this story. If not, uh, I would advise you to listen to this story. And as soon as I read this, I noticed uh, a couple words in this that I've never noticed before. And it immediately triggered me to something Jesus said. And I wonder if Jesus said what he said because of this story and brought it back. And it's just the comparison is just so cool to me. It's not a mind blowing, oh my gosh, this changes my life thing, but it's just one of those revelation, the little tidbits of information like, wow, God is just amazing. So second Kings chapter four, I want to read, um, uh, the last verse is number, so, uh, oh, excuse me, seven verses. So, um, we'll read these seven verses real fast and discuss them. So it says, it's talking about Elisha. Elijah had already been taken up in the chariot and Elisha is now the prophet. And it says, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to, his, to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is no, not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. And again, that second Kings chapter four, verse one through seven here. So it's a story about a woman who is in need, right? It's a story about a woman who's got two kids and she's like, I had a husband. He feared God. He is now dead. What do I need to do? Elisha says, go. I want you to go and get as many vessels as you can. Pots, pans, whatever you can get. Go and get as many vessels as you can. Go into your house and shut the door and take that oil. And I want you to begin to fill it into these vessels. And so what did she do? She was obedient to the T. She did exactly what Elisha said. She sent her sons, it says, to go get the vessels. They got as many as they could. They came into their house and they shut the door and they began to do exactly what he said. They began to take the jar of oil that she already had and it began to just continue to be multiplied until she said, quick, bring me another one. And this kid's like, that's all we got, mom, and, and the oil. And then once every single vessel they had was full, it says the oil ceased. It says it stopped. They didn't do anything. The oil ceased. It was just enough for every single vessel they were going to get. They didn't know how many they were going to get, but they got as many as they could. And there was just enough oil uh, to fill up every single one of them. And once everyone was full, the oil ceased. And then he said, go sell this and live upon it. So 
it's a pretty, you know, it's it's a it's a miracle nonetheless, right? And Elisha did many miracles. We know the floating axe head, the men were working, the axe head flew in the water and sunk. He threw a stick in the water, the axe head, and they picked it up, put it back on, kept working. It's like these crazy miracles of God. God can do all things. There's a lot of lessons here. Number one, there's always, you know, the oil. Oil in the Bible always represents what? The Holy Spirit. So when we, so it, it's, you know, we can't calculate, well, how, how did Elisha know how many pots they were going to get and how much oil she had? He didn't ask how much oil she had, did he? He said, go and get all the vessels you can and begin to pour out. That's what he said. And I want to key in on something that I've never, and, and, you can take a lot, I'm sure, out of the story that I'm overlooking that we may need to talk about and I'm overlooking, but I want to key in on something I've never read before. I've, I've never, it, it's never clicked in my head before. I've never paid attention to it. I've heard this story. We summarize a lot of things and I want to say this one more time. I say it a lot here on my channel, at least. We summarize a lot of the stories of the Bible, like David and Goliath, but how many times do we go and read the story in the Bible word for word. That is so, so important to not just watch a YouTuber who's putting the scripture on the screen, but to go and read the context of that what's put yourself in the position of this woman whose husband's dead, she's got two kids, and 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 really live it through her. You know what I'm saying? And to get every aspect of specifically what the Bible says in this story. Because if I wouldn't have come and actually read this story, I would have never picked up on the fact that it said this because most of the time things get left out in Sunday school, not on purpose, but when we're in Sunday school, when we're talking to our friends, when we're looking it up on YouTube and listening to stories, not every detail. We summarize things, right? We, especially as Americans, we summarize. We don't want to take up time. We have short attention spans. But I want to key in on a detail here that just as soon as I read it, it's like the Holy Spirit. I was just like, whoa. And it's this part right here. Here's what Elisha's instructions were, and this is what she did. And uh, here it is. So Elisha told her, what shall I do for you? Well, let me skip back down. He said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, number one. Here's what I want to do. not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. What? What? That's, that's what triggered you, Mr. Ferguson? That's what got you all excited? Let me read it one more time. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. He specifically told her to go into her house and shut the door behind her. And I thought, huh. And as soon as I heard that, it triggered the favorite verse that I have, Matthew 6.6. 6. You know what Matthew 6.6 6 is? It's my favorite verse because it's what's changed my life. Because Jesus specifically said this. Let me read you Matthew 6.6 6, if you're not familiar with it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. This is now the New Testament. Thousands of years later when Jesus came, this is what Jesus said. But when you pray, go into your room Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And I just see a comparison. It's a Holy Spirit thing. Do you see the comparison between what Jesus said versus what the Lord through Elisha? So the Lord, the Lord God told Elisha to speak these instructions to this woman and she obeyed because what did she do? She and her sons went into her room. They shut the door. They got all the vessels first, right? And then the crazy part is, what were the the rest of the instructions? After they've come in and shut the door, what did the man of God tell this woman? Uh, come in. You shall shut the door behind you and then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So Elisha, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is awesome. Bear with me. So after she had come in and shut the door, the man of God said, and then I want to begin, I want you to begin to take that oil and pour it out. I want you to pour out into these vessels. I want you to pour out and begin to fill up these vessels. And we know the miracle happened that there was just that oil got expanded from one little jar somehow. It filled up all these different vessels. But I just, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me, and that's why this lesson should be brief today, about how 
the man of God told this woman to go into the room and shut the door. Specific instructions of what I want you to do. Just like when Naaman had the leprosy. It was specific instructions. I want you to go and dip. But the specific instruction on this is to go into the room and shut the door. Get alone with the Father where he can do what is in secret. And in Matthew 6.6, 6, he says, go into the room and shut the door. And what you pray in secret, I will reward you openly. And when we take that Matthew 6, 6. See, we can do that because both these situations have happened. We're in the future and we can take Matthew 6, 6 and look at that and then apply it to the Old Testament with this woman. When you go into the room and shut the door, begin to pour out, pour out and do what the man and we'll do what the father has told us to do and begin to pour our heart out to God. He will reward you openly. See, they had enough jars uh, enough oil to be able to fill up all the different jars. And so they were able to sell that. And because they were able to take that oil and do in the secret place what the man of God had told them to do, they were rewarded openly by everybody because they took that oil and sold it to their neighbors and was able to make money and be able to sustain and live because of what God did to supply their need in that day and hour. And it's just like, wow. So is it like, I wonder if Jesus spoke those words somehow, you know, through the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke it to Elisha and here he steps and he's like, he's telling us, now I want you to be like this woman who went into the room and shut the door and began to pour out. I want you as a 2023 man or woman of God to go into your room, get away. There's, there's, there is such power in the details of the Bible. And that's what we need to get in today's day and hour that we need to, we don't just need to take somebody's word for it. We need to open up the Bible and read it with our own eyes and see, I, Jesus said, I want you to go into the room. I want you to shut your door. I want you to get alone with me and I want you to pour out your heart. It's not an old thing for you. I want you to pull, I want you to pour your heart out to God, to the Father and what you speak and the things that you do. I will begin to change you on the inside so that when you leave the place of secret, when you open that door and come out, you don't look the same as you did when you come in when we're sincere about pro pouring out our hearts to God. And it, to me, it just, it is, it's, it's the Holy Spirit that showed me this. And I'm like, I've never seen that before. And it's like Jesus used this Old Testament example in the New Testament for today, that we should be like this woman. Though it's not physical oil, it's it, we're, we're pouring out our heart. We're pouring out our concerns. We're pouring out to God. And he's going to multiply. He's going to take what we pray about, and he's going to use it to reward us openly. He's going to hear us. He's going to pour his Holy Spirit into us and fill us up as vessels and take this the spiritual Holy Spirit and will fill us up. So I hope that you can grasp and see what I'm trying to come across with. That just, when I read that and when, when Elisha, and I've read, Elisha said, now go into your room with your sons and shut the door. Matthew 6, 6, go into the room and shut the door. And what you do in secret, I will reward you openly. And it just immediately, it's like the Holy Spirit said, that's what, that's the same thing he was talking about. He used it in practice to do a miracle here. And he can do that same miracle in individuals today when we get serious about knowing the Father. If you're going, it may, see, this applies to anybody. Whether you're somebody with an addiction, somebody with secret sins, somebody that doesn't know God at all. You grew up in a godless home. You're, you're wandering around in your life right now, not knowing what I'm supposed to do. You need to go into the room and shut the door and pray to this God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and say, God, who are you? I want to know you. I want you. I want you to come into my heart. I want to know who you are, and he will pour out into you. Maybe you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. You're saved. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're going to heaven, but you've got the weight of the world upon you. You've got health issues. You've got addiction issues. The devil don't stop. <laughs> Lord knows the devil don't stop working on us. If anything, he attacks us more when we become believers in the Lord Jesus Christ because now we are really a threat against the kingdom of darkness because God's word is in our mouth. The Holy Spirit is, a, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are a threat to him. The devil comes against Christians harder than he does those that are not living for God. So don't think giving your heart to God, everything is easy street because that's not true. But with God, all things are possible. He walks with this day and night. But even as Christians, we got to deal with things, don't we? In our mind, our mental, you know, the temptations of our past life try to come back. You know, um, our kids, our, our daughters, our, our sons, our family, all these things can just, it, the enemy tries to wear us down. He wants nothing more to kill us, 
steal our salvation, steal our joy, destroy us, and have us walk away from the faith. That's his job. That's his goal. We've got to go into the room and shut the door and pour out this stuff to God and say, God, I'm here because I need you today. God, I just I just need a refreshing of the oil of the Holy Spirit. God, pour it upon me today. God, I need you to be able to go back out into this world another day, tomorrow, today, whatever. And God, I need you to help me renew my mind, renew me. And he does it. He, will, he did it for me this morning. I did, I went in, threw on some praise music, and I'm telling you, sometimes I don't. Sometimes we don't want to go into the room and shut the door because we do it repetitiously. But when we put on, I'll tell you what I did. I put on some praise music and I just sat there and listened and the Holy Spirit just comes and begins to deal with us. And I begin to cry and I just begin to say, Lord, thank you. And just to imagine the love of our father and what he's done for us. And he changes the atmosphere of, our, of the secret place when we get alone with him. He knows how to do these things. So whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, we need to do exactly what this woman did with her two sons. We need to go into the room. We need to shut the doors. Matthew 6, 6 says, remember Jesus, the son of the living God, God in the flesh said, I need you to go into the room, shut the door, and what you do in secret, I will reward you openly. God said that to us. He didn't recommend it. He said, go into the, he said, go, 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 do it. Don't think about it, do it. So, and, and I will tell you, and, and I, 100%, I believe it's true. I can do my devotions in my living room, sitting on my couch, but there's something different about going in that back bedroom where I've always went and I've always had a door and shut it and gotten alone. There's a, it's just, it's different. I know God can come in this living room just like he can, but when we make a choice to say, Lord, I'm specifically going to do what you told me to do. I believe he honors that. He, there, there's something about listening to what God says, being obedient to his word. And so we'll cut it off there. I hope this has been encouraging and it's made sense because it makes sense up here with me. I hope verbally Holy Spirit is able to get it out. Father, I just thank you for those that have taken the time to watch this video today. God, I pray that you pour out into these men and women, boys and girls that may watch this video. God, I don't know. They may watch it 50 years after it's recorded. I have no idea. But God, I pray for your presence and your power to come upon them. God, whether they know you or don't know you as Savior, Lord, of course, I pray for those that don't know you, that, Father, they would make that commitment to say, I want Jesus to come into my life, Lord. You are the happiness and joy that every single human being is missing. And, Lord, once we find you, God, it's like, man, I should have done this a long time ago. So I pray for that one that may click on this video, not knowing why in the world they clicked on this video, that, God, they would ask Jesus to come and take up residence in their heart today to forgive them of their sins and to let that love begin to flow in their life. And for my brothers and sisters out there that already have the love of God in their heart, they've asked you, Lord, this road that we walk with you is difficult. And God, I pray for the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit to just pour your oil on them, God. Refill them, rejuvenate them today, God. Help us to remember we need to obey your words, God, to come into the secret place and let you do your job, God. Let you do your thing. When we obey, God, you'll do the rest when we do what you call us to do. So I pray that we we would remember these words. We would remember these scriptures. God, we would see this in a new light. And God, that you would allow us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. That God, there's so much darkness, but God, wherever the light is, darkness has to flee. Let us be that light to this lost and dying world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch these videos. I don't know why you do it unless you have a hunger and a passion for Jesus, but I'm praying others are seeking love. They're seeking happiness. They're seeking joy, and they don't know where to find it. That videos like this and others, there's so much gospel out there, right? There's so much, I'm a Christian. This is what you need to do, but we know that we have to stick to God's word and his ways and his truth. And so if you believe this is God's word and the truth, share it. Give it a thumbs up. Tell your friends about it. Share it on your social media. I'm not a social media person, but may God bless you and richly uh, these words would come to your mind and just, uh, and just uh, um, consume you and would encourage you next time you're doing your studies to go into the room and get alone with God. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll hopefully see you next Wednesday with another Mr. Ferguson vlog, devotional, midweek quickie video. God bless you.